So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, emulation configuration switches and this little bit of documentation I've written. So what we have here on the screen is TerraTerm. It's hooked up to COM3. COM3 is the serial port presented from the ESP32 to my, my computer here. Uh, with the ESP32, of course, uh, hooked up. And uh, so we'll be watching some of the stuff the system does here uh, in a moment. Uh, if, if you've looked into the information on the configuration switches, there's ways to manage how the emulation works. Uh, things like which CPU you're using, Z80 or 8080, CPU clock speed, whether you have ROMs in the system or not, etc. And there's been a few questions up on the forum ab about this. And I've tried to capture here all the required steps to change the configuration on your MSI. So if you've got any active work open, editing something, save all that work, get to the point where you can safely shut down, and turn the power switch off for the emulation. Over here to the right, turn the switch off. That for the right switch goes down, all the LEDs are off. You hold up the examine switch here, keep holding it up. You reach around behind the MSI 8080, and up here where the ESP32 is on the back of the unit, you'll find a little uh, switch next to the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. While holding the examine switch up, uh, push that little reset button, keep holding the examine switch up, and what will happen after a couple seconds is you'll see these four LEDs here start to sequence, and you'll see your con current configuration right out down here in the LEDs. You can make changes via the switches, click deposit to save those changes, push the little reset around the back again, wait for the system to come up, and, and you've changed uh, the basic system configuration. So there's really effectively four groups of switches here. There's a group here to the left that are unused. There's a group of switches here that control the ROM. This group of four switches here control your CPU, CPU speed, th those kind of things. And the switches down here, this guy controls the Wi-Fi mode of your setup and diagnostic messages on your setup. So I'm assuming at this point that you probably got through the configuration where your emulation woke up in uh, access point mode where you had to connect to its IP ad address, get the web screen, put in your information for your wireless network, uh, your SID and your password, etc. And then change this bit here to be a one so that it came up and it was just another machine on your wireless network with an IP address. Uh, if you haven't done that, go back and look up the videos and instructions uh, and get that done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to start talking about the switches from switch 15 uh, down to switch zero. I've color-coded the switch numbers here to kind of line up with the blue, red, blue, red here. And as I mentioned, that four, that group of four switches all the way to the left are unused. Just leave those down at this point. These next four switches here control ROMs. And if you look at the default configuration, the machine's uh, configured to boot CPM22. And that's really controlled or, or set here about how the, the ROMs are mapped into the system. You've got three switches here that control which ROM is selected. And you add those ROMs to the system uh, really by mounting the compact flash card or the, or the SD card on your, main, your, your, your desktop PC. Boy, I'm really stumbling here for words. Copying the ROM images on, bringing the system up, and in the web UI, uh, there's a ROM 1 to ROM 7 and typing in the ROM names there. Uh, you should notice that by default, I believe ROM 0 is the CPM boot ROM, and by default ROM 1, I'm looking, looking at my chart here, I believe is the VIO ROM. Uh, so what these switches here are, are, are telling the system is when you power up, I actually want you to load this ROM image into the system and start execution of it. This a switch here 11 controls how that ROM gets mapped into memory, and that has to do with how the hardware and the MSI works. The MSI has the ability to load a ROM at address hex D800, but on reset, make that ROM appear to be at address 0000 as well. And that gives you the ability to do a power on restart. So even though the ROM and the system is really is at D800, the system sees it starting at address 0000. And that's where the Z80 and 8080 begin execution. And down at the bottom of that ROM, apologies for the motorcycles, it might do a bit of initialization, and then it'll change the mode on the inside to put RAM back in that place there and jump up into that D800 address space. 
Don't know if that made any sense, but this switch here really controls where that shadow ROM, as I call it, is exposed. I've got shadow ROM starting at address 0000. That's a shadow of the actual ROM at D800. Uh, the basic ROMs get swapped in here by configuring the switches as well. We then come to the next group of four switches here, which basically control your processor. Uh, so uh, for this switch number four here, if it's down or a zero, you have an 8080 processor. Up or a one, it's going to be a Z80. This switch number five here controls emulation of undocumented CPU opcodes. Uh, not all the opcodes are... There can be up to 256 8-bit opcodes in the machine, and not all of those are actually uh, used by the manufacturer, and so you get unused bit patterns, and sometimes those opcodes can be useful, and people have documented those unused opcodes op over the years, and some software takes advantage of them. So this is really whether you're going to allow the emulation to execute you know, those uh, undocumented opcodes or not. You can set the CPU speed to 2 or 4 megahertz. And there's this unlimited that says run the machine at the absolute fastest it can run or set it down to a zero to say use whichever speed this is set to. And finally, uh, we get down to switch three here, which is your wireless access type, whether it's an access point or in station mode. And then these last three switches here really control uh, uh, the logging levels, the post logging levels. And I can see I actually have a bit of a formatting issue here. We'll fix this. Well, that certainly isn't what I wanted. Uh, do this or I'll miss it. Why am I not getting, I guess, let me grab, try format painter this way. Don't know why I can't paint that color in there, and I'll come back to this later. This really controls how much logging information you get from the ESP32. From basically tell me nothing, or, or very little, to be very verbose. Uh, so right now, I have my machine configured to give us very little logging information. And I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And if you watch in the comm terminal here, you'll see the startup messages appear as I, as I power the emulation up. So let's come up in Z80 Sim. Uh, telling us that we've started. It's telling us my CPU is 4 megahertz. I have 64K of... RAM, I'm in the MPUB banked ROM, RAM enabled, that's kind of that shadow RAM mode I discussed. It actually loaded, again apologies for the motorcycles, it loaded this ROM file at machine address is D800. It's actually shadowed at 0000 to allow the machine to boot CPM. Uh, we've got the CPM disk mounted as one, and if I actually kick run here, on the emulation, the machine will come up and start CPM. So with the emulator up and running, uh, that's what you typically expect to see, it, it, is those, that minimum set of messages. I'm going to clear the screen here, and I'm going to actually reset the ESP32 and do a hard reset. And we'll see messages start to come from the ESP32 as it starts itself up. And we can see here we got a block of messages. It loaded various things, it set various configurations, and on full startup, again, we got the same screen, but with startup information from the ESP32. I'm not going to set these three bits to ones, and that'll give us very verbose logging. And again, we'll follow that procedure we talked about at the top. Uh, the emulation power switch is off, I'm holding up the examine key. You won't actually see anything happening over there on the terminal itself. I'm going to set those three switches up. I'm going to deposit that. I'm going to press reset again. And if we watch now, we'll start to see more kind of more information scroll by here. Uh, it's giving us more verbose information. Like we're seeing all of the various ROMs that are mapped into the system. This timeout always seems to happen. And it just kind of goes through all this rigor and mole until it finally gets up and is stable. And now if I start up the emulation again. We'll see it come up. It's telling us things like uh, there's a monitor running on core one, etc. So really these just control how much information would happen in the default terminal here. I then go ahead and try to explain these switches kind of down here to kind of back up what I'm saying here. Uh, 
So let's go ahead and close that document down. Did I actually have the Excel document opened up ahead of time? I don't. Let's open up Excel here and look at kind of the more detailed document. And I forgot to pre-do this. We'll need to resize it a little bit to fit on the screen. Apologies for not doing this in advance. So we've got an Excel document I've prepared, and it's got two tabs in it. So there's a Settings tab and an Examples tab, and we're on the first tab, it's Settings. And again, this is just kind of a rehash of everything I've just said. And what it really gives you here is if we take the ROM controls, if they're all up, we're going to have ROM7 in the system at address 0000. If this bit is down, and these are these are up it's going to be ROM 7 starting at the ROM address uh, so really it just gives you the switch combinations and kind of what that does we have the same thing here for the CPU speed controls from the switches all the way down which is an 8080 2 megahertz no undocumented opcodes to all up giving us a Z80 unlimited CPU speed undocumented opcodes so again it just kind of give you a, an idea here of what the switches do and then the uh, boot message switches we just looked at from uh, you, you know no no post messages no boot to uh, pretty verbose uh, messages we then move on here to some examples and look at this moved in here so we can see it and again it's the same thing we've been looking at the four banks of switches what they do and some examples here so my machine when it was uh, delivered came with this configuration where these switches were down and configuration or the LEDs were off and it followed this pattern. And what that said was, uh, yeah, ROM1 at address 0000. And see, the ROM's actually at D800, and that shadow exposes it at 0000. 4 megahertz, Z80, etc. So this is my current configuration, not the default. The default would be up here with the uh, access point switched down. Uh, but, this, but this, you know, the speed of configuration you get into to start CPM. Uh, and then just other examples here. ROM2 uh, is the VIO board ROM. It, get, it gets mapped at ROM address 1, these three bits here. There's a, you know, a 001, that's a, a binary, or a, really an octal or hex 1 there in that position. Uh, XY basic is in ROM location 5, 0. You know, that's really a, well, really these three bits here are a 5. 8K basic. So basically, you go through that procedure. If you can pick one of these that matches what you want, you can go through that procedure we talked about. You can set the switches for what you want here. Make sure that you actually have, in this case, the CPM ROM, VIO ROM. This guy here mapped as ROM2 in the UI. Reset your system and come up and run. So hopefully that's a pretty good explanation of what these pages are meant to represent. I'm going to get these posted up in the forum today. But I wanted to put a short video up ahead of time just to kind of talk about what these are. Another note is these are very much draft documents. If you find errors, things you don't understand, go ahead and post on the forum, and I will try to make things clearer. I'm sure there's at least one thing I've got wrong in here someplace, most likely multiple. Uh, it's easy to do. Again, this is version 6 of the document I'll be posting. Again, uh, if you find errors, etc., uh, things don't work, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, this documentation is being done independently from, from the work that the High Nibble's doing. He's seen some of this in advance uh, and, and kind of blessed off on some very early versions of this. So anyhow, I think that's everything I wanted to cover here. Uh, we'll talk soon.